Hello, Kiss Base Jr. Happy Sunday. I was reading over the Ten Commandments recently, but before I start with that, did you know if you memorize the Ten Commandments, Old and New Testament, the Lord's Prayer, and the Apostles' Creed, you can win a Bible trophy? <gasps> I think you should do it. But anyways, let's go back to my story. I was reading over the Ten Commandments and I was overwhelmed by how much I can't fulfill these 10 laws. No matter how hard I try, I will always fall short because we, as man, we are not perfect. But as I was praying over this, I realized that it's okay if we can't completely fulfill the 10 commandments or God's law. It's because of Jesus. He fulfilled the law for us perfectly. So even though we can't fulfill the law perfectly, God perfectly covered us with His love and mercy. So I hope during this worship that you keep this in mind that God's love is perfect. So everyone, let's stand on up. Let's go!
the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried, and he de descended into hell. In the third day, he rose again from the dead, and ascended at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. All right. Here we go. Hi friends, my name is Pastor Diana, and you're probably wondering what my job is. Well, I'm a storyteller, and I have a story for you today. In today's story, the disciples were scared. Their best friend Jesus has passed away, and now Jesus' friends were afraid. So they were hiding in the upstairs room with the door bolted shut. 
But that did not stop Jesus. He just walked right in. It's a ghost! Thomas screamed as he hid under the table. But it wasn't a ghost. Do my friends at home think it was a ghost? Well, we'll see in this story if it was a ghost. You see, after the death of Jesus, the disciples were lost and confused and they weren't sure what to do. But we're gonna have to need Bible Boy! Hi everybody, it's me Bible Boy and I'm gonna read the Bible verse for you guys today. Luke 24 verse 36. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Luke 24 verse 36. Bible Boy, thank you so much for today's story. Peter was actually walking around and sitting around feeling guilty. Well, guilty for what? Well, he denied Jesus three times. Jesus told him that he would never abandon him or leave him. But before the rooster cried, Peter denied him three times. And Jesus predicted it. And the rooster cried, deny. What does deny mean? Well, to deny means to reject or to say no to and Peter was a follower of Jesus so he decided to run away and do something that he was very very good at fishing he decided to go on a fishing trip and they fished through the whole night and they caught <gasps> nothing and the next morning boy were they exhausted and tired they finally headed back to the shore they rowed towards the land and as the morning light was appearing, the disciples can barely see or make out what looked like a man standing on the shore. The mysterious figure called to them, Children, did you catch any fish? Puzzled, they answered to the stranger, No. The man then said, Cast your net to the right side of the boat, and then you'll catch something. Shrugging the shoulders, the disciples did just as the stranger suggested. The net was filled with so much fish, the men could not pull them all up. Only the disciples, or maybe one of them, they knew who the stranger was. They cried out, Lord! And Peter was so excited, he jumped out of the boat. He dived into the river or the water to go to Jesus and run up to him. And Jesus is now going to invite them to have breakfast. They want to talk and laugh like they've never done before, like friends. And this fellowship was so much sweeter than better because their hero, their master, has defeated death and he's come back to share the victory. And Jesus is now hungry. So he tells his disciples, hmm, friends, what's for lunch? Peter gives them fish and they all eat and sit back and they're just watching Jesus as though he's a ghost. It's impossible. How can Jesus be right in front of us? Mmm, delicious, Jesus said as he wipes his mouth and grin. Can a ghost do that? And he winked. And then they all laughed. I'm really here, Jesus said. And friends, he really was. Peter's heart leaped with so much joy that he just ran up to Jesus, hugging him and kissing him, and all the disciples followed. Their hearts were bursting with so much happiness, and they ate together, and they were so happy just looking at Jesus. They wanted to touch him to make sure they weren't dreaming. You see, Jesus had a real body, but his body was so much better. It had defeated death, it has come through death, and it could never be sick or be killed again. Jesus had come back with a brand new body. But not only were sad things coming untrue, the friends realized that they were becoming new again. Was God going to make everything new? Jesus said, I am the savior and the rescuer of this world. And they knew because he couldn't stay dead. Because Jesus has come alive once again and everything was going to be okay. When the disciples had all finished eating, Jesus turned to Peter and asked him, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus asked again for the second time, do you love me? Peter replied the same, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. When Jesus asked Peter the third time if he loved him, a feeling of sadness washed over Peter. 
he had failed in his love before when he denied Jesus. What could he have said now to prove any different? But he did love Jesus. So he responded, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Friends, Jesus' death on the cross has shown Peter what sacrificial love really looked like. Peter knew that his life was not his own, but that it had been bought with the price. And Peter was now transformed and knowing he was fully ready to love. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep and follow me. Jesus showed Peter that he was forgiven and he was given the opportunity to be reconciled. He asked Peter three times, Do you love me? And Peter replied three times, You know I do. Jesus forgave Peter and restored Peter and called him to a life of surrender and loving Jesus. A few days later, as they walked together, Jesus told his friends, It's time for me to go home to my father. They all looked worried. And then they remembered what Jesus had told them before he died. There's a place for you and I'll get it ready, Jesus had said. Hmm, you know the way. But Thomas said, I don't know the way to get there. Yes, you do, said Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When at last they had finally reached the top of the highest mountain near Jerusalem, Jesus turned to them and said, go and tell everyone, tell everyone the good news. Tell them I love them so much that I died for them. It's the truth that overcomes the terrible lie. God loves his children. Yes, he really does. And suddenly, the whole sky is going to be dazzling light. No, everyone can come home to God, Jesus said. Death is not the end of you. You can live together with your Father in heaven because I've rescued the whole world. And something amazing is going to happen. Listen very carefully. Jesus is going to rise again in the bright air higher and higher. They shaded their eyes to watch him go until a cloud hid Jesus forever, until they couldn't see Jesus anymore. They stood up looking in the sky like that for a long time, and suddenly two shining men are going to appear. What are you doing? they asked. Jesus has finally gone up to heaven, but one day he will come back to us again in the same way that we saw him leave from heaven and from the sky. Jesus' friends quickly ran back to Jerusalem and there was a strange gladness or joy inside their heart. And something that Jesus said stuck in their mind. And they couldn't stop thinking about it when he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Never and always and forever I will be with you. But friends, how can Jesus leave them and be with them at the same time? They couldn't understand it. Hmm, well, in today's story, we're going to see. Friends, when Peter denied Jesus, what does that look like? Friends at home, would you ever deny Jesus? I'm going to give you three scenarios that it could look like for you to deny Jesus. Number one, let's say your friends thought Christians were weird. If you pretend you're not a Christian, oh, that's a way of denying Jesus. Number two, you deny Jesus when you act like a hypocrite. When? Some followers might say, I believe in Jesus, but they don't do the things that Jesus wants them to. Or two, you deny Jesus if you ever say false truth. For instance, some people say there are many ways to heaven, but my friends at home, how many ways are there to heaven? One, you say, that's right. There's only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus. You can't go on an airplane. You can't go on a train. You can't get there by a one-way ticket, golden ticket that you buy off the streets. No, the only way to heaven is through Jesus. In today's story, we've heard that Jesus came back from the dead, and he didn't go straight to heaven. No, friends, he went to go see his best friends the ones who denied him and the ones who were afraid. But Jesus forgave them, even though they doubted Jesus and said, Lord, I will not believe unless I touch the nails in your hands, the thorns on your head. Even though they denied Jesus before they saw him with their real eyes, 
And even though they said, Jesus, I do not know you, and even though they did many other things, the Lord forgave them and he went to go visit them to remind them, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Now to go back to that question, what did Jesus mean by that when he told the disciples that? Well, friends, when he told the disciples that, he meant to say, hmm, I'm leaving you because I'm going to my Father in heaven, but I'm not leaving you because I'm leaving with you the Holy Spirit. <gasps> friends, what is the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm so curious, but that's a message that you're going to have to wait till next week. We're going to hear what the Holy Spirit does, who the Holy Spirit is, and what the disciples do with the Holy Spirit inside of them. Ooh, I cannot wait for this message. And friends, just like today's story, you guys were reminded, hmm, that Jesus came down to earth like a human. He even ate with the disciples. He had fellowship with the disciples and he comforted them, reminding them that he is the almighty God who will never leave them. So friends at home, I hope you guys are comforted in knowing, oh, he did not die, and that was the end of the story. Oh no, friends. He died, he resurrected, and then he came back to see the disciples to tell them, tell the good news. And then friends, this is the good part. He's coming back once again to see all of us. Isn't that exciting? We're not sure when he's going to come back. Hmm, it could be soon, it could be really really long time you know further we're not sure but the good news is one day he will come and one day we will all go to heaven and see him face to face amen amen let's pray heavenly father thank you so much for your precious word today we have hope god when you when you first died on on the cross the disciples were so scared they thought the jews were going to come back and get them but God, you protected your friends, didn't you? And God, we know that you're going to protect us as well. Please keep us safe in your arms always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, friends. What do you guys think? Oh, wow. Did I like that story? Jesus truly is the disciples' best friend. And friends, he's your best friend too. He loves you very much. Don't ever forget this. And I can't wait to see you at small group. Bye, guys. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespasses against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. First to second Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. First to second Thessalonians, and now it's first Timothy, then it's second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Now it's first Peter, and then it's second Peter. First John, second John, third John, Jude. Revelation. These are the books of the Bible, the wonderful books of the Bible. These are the books of the Bible, the wonderful books. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free, a gift for you, for me. These are the books of the Bible, the wonderful books of the Bible. Oh